This is going to be one of those videos that's just going to be me talking. I'm very sorry. Whilst I'm waiting for somebody to do something very cool on that computer, I have been asked many, many times if one of these packs break, oh, you can't look at that side, that's the dodgy side. You look at this side, this is the good side. This is a 25 milliamp hour bank. This is bank three. This is the faulty bank. Probably not so much faulty as something's wrong with it. So, how do I plan to fix it? And I'm looking around. Ah, this thing constantly hides on me. A bit of an old tile. How do I plan on fixing it when something, when one of the cells go wrong? Well, there's. There's not much to it other than hard work, should I be honest. I gotta desolder it all, both sides. I gotta get some sort of hammer and whack all this off and put it all back together again. Or test it and then put it all back together again. And now it just comes down to actually desoldering everything one at a time. Let's get started. Let's wait for the soldering iron to heat up. Watch me walk around my workshop and do some other things. I should answer some YouTube comments. That'd be a good idea. And that is switched on. If anybody's interested in which soldering iron I actually used, I've been through five or six soldering irons. This one here, which is $22.50, $22.90, is by far the best soldering iron I've found. It seems to hold out well. The tip lasts a fair amount of time. Uh, bang for buck, can't go wrong. <laughs> it's really cold in here. This is taken, st still not heated up properly. Now in the past, I've just ripped these off because I haven't wanted to keep them. But this time I think I'm going to keep them. One, because of the effort that's gone in to make them. And some of them are still really good, really, really, really usable things and I can there are going to be some packs towards the end and in fact this here is my third bank which I haven't done the bus bars on yet I could have easily done the bus bars on this one but the guy that gave me money wanted this pack as a consistent test so when we do the one hour load test again we can quantify the differences however I am doubtful that I'm going to have the thermal camera. Let's get this marvel of efficiency happen. Ha ha ha. Sheer magic, I tell you. Whoever's idea of this was, was genius. Just need something a little bit heavy to hold it back. Oh, that Sikaflex is on there good. Jesus. Okay, half of these are breaking. I don't think we've got any choice but to simply rip the whole thing off. That's not going to hurt on that side. However, on the negative side, it's going to have to be desoldered. Otherwise, it's going to wreck the bus bar. Ah, that's a bit easier on the negative side. It's not dealing with it. it's such a small piece of copper. I'm taking care to try and do this as fast as possible because doing this once is bad enough. Doing it twice is probably a lot worse. Ah, ripping through it now. Let like the soldering iron reheat a bit. It's dying a bit. Needs to get some heat into it. Oh, that's better. What a soldering iron. That certainly is one problem with using only a 40 watt soldering iron. However, it does ensure that you just don't drop 
wholesale heat into the cells. Here we are. Two bus bursts successfully removed, and we can definitely reuse both of them. I'll give you a quick pan shot. So that's the positive side. That's the one I just ripped the bus bar off. The fuses were so small that it just ripped straight off. So it looks alright. Negative side looks a little bit more dodgy because I've had to desolder everything. Uh, but you touch that up with a nice warm iron and it'll be good to go. Okay. Now, pulling a bank apart. That is going to be... Oh, that didn't work. That was a good plan until it didn't work. I think all good plans are good plans until they don't work, aren't they? Anyways. Ugh. Of course, I've got to have it like three meters away because it's got a shitty lens on it. Actually, it's got an iPhone lens on it. Right here, and you can't see me. To get this off, I need to be more prepared because it's going to be a pain in the ass. Right, hammer. Not a big sledgehammer, but a rubber mallety thing. I find works well. And even though I have solid state hard drives in all my laptops, we're going to move that just for fun. A slight intermission if we must. This makes me sick. You really shouldn't do this on YouTube, YouTubers. <laughs> Fuck, that was stupid. Rightio. Look at that. I can't get it in picture. Solomon is magically being installed on my computer. I think it's something to do with being able to do another test this weekend. Let's see. Right, back to work. Got to do some work. Got to get this done. I should stop carrying you around and around everywhere like a selfie stick. Ooh, that's professional. We've got a different angle. Rightio. Right. Did anybody see where I put my hammer? I have... I lose tools. This shed loses tools. Don't be kidding me, I just had it here. Where'd the hammer go? Did anybody see where... There's nothing magic about this. It's just tapping it with a hammer. Radio sports fans, there's pack three, unceremoniously removed from service. So let's see if I can track down my multimeter and see if we've got any really dead cells in here. Okay, Solomon is still being installed on my computer and I believe I was just moving the mouse when he was trying to use the mouse. Right, it looks pretty bloody cool so far. This is not a review. Pete doesn't do reviews. I reckon if you're gonna do a review, going to take you at least 12 months to test it properly. I guess I could do a review on my PIP 2424 HS, which I'm nothing but happy with, but you know, there you go, there's your review, I'm happy with it. Hasn't blown up, and the house hasn't burnt down, so I guess you've got to be happy. Why am I bothering with polarity? Polarity really doesn't matter in this test. Radio. I'll lay them all out so I can put that camera in a position where you can actually see me doing the test and see the cells. As an interesting thought, if you have a look at these cells, none of them have the original markings that I put on them because some twat used a non-permanent marker, which means as soon as I washed them all, my original markings disappeared, which really pissed me off. But 
Now I use, this is the old one and this is the new one. Where is it? That's the one not to use, non-permanent. That's, in hindsight, that was a really dumb idea. So I'm doing a sh just a Sharpie now, which works even better. Rightio. Where can we put this camera so you can see it nice and clearly? You don't need to see my ugly mug. This is a little bit more important. Rightio. Of course, now I can't see it. Genius! Rightio, let's see if that is readable. Alright, 3 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15. 3.15
and I think the variance in temperature in the workshop makes a big difference to the actual voltage itself but for some reason that cell is high I don't know if that's going to affect it greatly but it's still high that one seems like it's okay I thought it wasn't but that one seems like it's okay but one of these is very 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 low and the other one's poor so it's a safe bet that the other one that came out of the same pack is faulty as well so uh, was it a good test I don't think it hurt did I learn something yeah I think from memory I knew the rest of this pack was bad when I processed it I think just maybe I might have just thrown it in just because I was um, trying to make up numbers so maybe that's a lesson learnt maybe I shouldn't have chucked it in and I did but anyway we caught that one I don't think that is the sole reason why the entire bank was uh, low I reckon it was just because of the incredibly huge drain on it so I'll call that a video for now guys and I shall see you when I start doing the bus bars which will be later this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Cheers, guys.